To help you take care of your horses, we present Vet Tips, featuring the veterinarians of Alamo Pintado Equine Medical Center in Los Olivos, California. This week's Vet Tip was from Equestrian Nation's preceding series, Horse World, and features Alamo Pintado's founder, Dr. Doug Herthel. Hi, I'm Dr. Doug Herthel, and I'm a veterinarian, and we're going to talk about some safe, effective ways of cooling out your equine athlete. We all know that when a horse uh, exercises, he's got uh, to have muscle contraction, and muscle contraction typically produces work, but it also produces heat. And so the, the important thing is that we need to know how to monitor the effects of the heat on your horse and his response to, uh, to uh, temperature and humidity and exercise. To do this, you have to know what subtle things to watch for to make sure that your horse is not becoming dehydrated or overheated. The uh, important thing to know is the main way a horse uh, dissipates heat from his body is through the skin surface when the sweat is evaporated. You need to have air movement which causes, speeds up the evaporative process and uh, the higher the humidity the less effective evaporation takes place. Since uh, evaporation of sweat is so critical we need to, uh, to know what are the signs uh, of a horse having trouble with heat. And uh, obviously, if you know your horse well, you're going to pick these up before it uh, becomes a problem. But first off, uh, dehydration is uh, evidenced by the fact that the skin loses its elasticity. And as you can see, this horse's skin pops right back very nicely. Another thing is uh, sometimes the eyes will be a little bit sunken. You'll have a little depression here. The gums are, are not moist, they're dry. Very importantly, the heart rate is higher than it should be and you can tell by feeling the pulse or listening to it if you have a stethoscope. The, uh, the other thing is uh, recovery sometimes is delayed. If you don't hear any intestinal sounds that's an indication that this horse has gotten too hot and too dehydrated and is going to have some heat exhaustion. Respiration rates uh, elevated and uh, a very serious sign is when you notice that your horse has stopped sweating. That indicates that he is dehydrated, and if he stops sweating, his temperature is going to go up very rapidly. So if we have a, a rule of thumb that when you add the, the uh, ambient temperature and relative humidity numbers, if that number is in the 120 range, uh, say if it's 20% humidity, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, those horses that are in condition are going to have uh, little or no problem dissipating heat with normal care. When it gets up to be a total of 150, uh, there's risk and a, a good rider and horseman needs to take care of uh, the cooling and the, the drinking plan for his horse in those conditions. Anytime those figures get up to 180 or more, say 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and uh, 75 degrees uh, humidity or 75 percent humidity, you need to uh, even think about uh, discontinuing a athletic event or delaying it until the conditions are better. Well, infrared is a wavelength. It's a very sensitive indicator of heat changes. So the infrared camera we're using to evaluate the effect of different ways of cooling your horse out is a very sensitive test and it just is a help for us to see how effective uh, the, the efforts of uh, the people to put water on the legs, put alcohol on the legs, uh, with and without a breeze, so, you know, the difference of a fan versus no fan. The areas that get hotter over the major muscle masses, those areas heat up first. The extremities stay more cool because there's no, no heat producer underneath the uh, extremities. And you've got the skin, which is the cooling surface where the evaporation takes place. So the major heat builds up over the muscles. In case of outside, uh, a breeze will cool a horse much quicker than if there's no breeze at all. We need to uh, realize that when we want to cool our horse, there's uh, safe ways and there's unsafe ways. First thing we want to know is when you have a very hot horse, you don't want to bring him in and instantly throw uh, cool or cold water on his back and all over his body. But we never want to put uh, cold water on the back or the major hind muscles of the horse when they've come in and they're very hot. And that's going to that's going to tend the the cold is going to tend to shut the circulation down in those areas 
and you want that circulation to continue so that the heat exchange can take place. Now, that doesn't happen on these large vessels. This, this circulation does not shut down when you start cooling these areas. It's only the peripheral vasculature of the smaller vessels. And so that's the reason you want to be uh, um, careful not to over, be overzealous in your cooling of the muscle groups until the horse has cooled out some. The large vessels of the neck, you, you have artery and veins that are very large. The large vessels inside the legs, the back legs, you have the very, very large uh, veins, which you've all seen. Those are the areas you want to concentrate on first. And so to help this horse cool, even though he is sweating and cooling, you want to uh, put cool water over these areas because the, the blood coursing through there is going to uh, go back to the heart and the uh, muscle and be cooler than it did when it came out. It's certainly okay to put water over these large areas, but to initially cool them down, uh, direct your efforts to these areas. As far as water, obviously you're going to offer them water, and if they're really hot and there is some dehydration, you would off offer them uh, small amounts frequently. So these are the things you like to watch for, and uh, this is another vet tip from the uh, veterinary profession to you.